Hello, welcome to this lesson in Engineering Mechanics. Here we're finally going to enter the realm of solving our problems using vector components uh, and the components of vectors. And so we're going to use everything we've learned up to this point uh, to add our vectors together. So the ways that we've added vectors before now have been all graphical. We've, you know, we've had to shift the arrows and then draw a resultant and we use triangles and trigonometry and things uh, to get the answer. So we use math. But it's effectively a geometric solution when you do it that way, a, a, a solution based on just drawing something graphical. Okay? Here we're going to be representing vectors as components. And so, yes, it's graphical. Yes, we can draw it on the board. But it's, it's more of a math representation of the x and y components. So if you're going to add two vectors together, uh, and you're going to do it in terms of components, what you do is you take vector number one and break it up into its x and y components. And then you take vector 2 and you break it up into its x and y components. And then, so now you have both vectors in terms of x and y, and it's very, very simple. You just take the x components and add those together, and you take the y components and add those together. And so what you end up getting is the resultant vector in terms of the resultant's x components and the resultant's y components, and so you have the resultant. Uh, in terms of x and y directions. That's really the power of components and it, it's also very extensible because it lets you add lots of vectors together. You know, not just two. Like if I had to add five vectors graphically, it would be tough because I'd have to draw it and then find the resultant, draw it again, find the resultant, draw it. It's a lot of drawing. Here all I do then is I find the components in x and y of each vector and then I add all of the x components together and that's going to be the resultant's x component and then I add all the y components together, and that's the resultant's y component. And so since I know that the x and y components of the resultant, I know that what the resultant vector is. All right, so let's work an example and show that. And I'll have a couple of additional things to show you along the way as well. So let's say um, here I'm going to have an x, y axis here, right? So here is x and here is y. And so here, somewhere around here anyway, is some kind of a eyelid or something like that. So here we have a circle, you know, some kind of like a threaded thing and screwed into a piece of wood or whatever. And anyway, I have a vector F1 that's pointed this direction, and F1 is 600 newtons, and this is an angle of 30 degrees to the x-axis. All right? And then I know uh, this guy, F2, is 400 newtons. Notice that it is shorter than this one, so that's why it's 400 newtons. And the angle here is measured with respect to the y-axis, and it's 45 degrees. And the question is, find the resultant of these two vectors. Now you already know how to do this graphically, because I could make a parallelogram, and then I can use the angles to figure out things, and use law of sines, law of cosines. But again, it involves a lot of drawing, a lot of redrawing and redrawing and using all these, these rules. It's much easier just to look at F1 and split it into its X component and also its Y component. And so then I'll have that information for vector 1. And then go to vector 2 and split it into its X component and into its Y component. And then I'll have X and Y here. And then I simply sum them together. I sum the X components together. And then separately, I sum the y components together. That gives me the resultant's x component and the resultant's y component. So we're, we're going to do that here. It's exactly how we're going to handle it. So let's go and first work with vector, uh, or let's, I should say, let's go ahead and work in the x direction. So the way you write this is, and there's going to be many different ways, but the way I write it is um, f1 in the x direction. So this is vector 1 x component, or you can write it as f1x if you want, what 